Welcome back to another video. Today I want to share five pieces of advice on how to ace your physics class from a physics teacher's perspective, as well as someone who aced college level physics at UCLA. Growing up, I'm not gonna lie, physics was very intimidating. I remember people talking about physics like it was the hardest science class ever. But now that I'm teaching it, I actually think it's the most intuitive of all three of the core science courses. Again, core science courses meaning biology, physics, and chemistry. So let's just go ahead and get into those pieces of advice. Number one, I would say you should definitely use something called the guess technique. Ironically, even though it's called the guess technique, it really ensures that you are not guessing when you're coming up with an answer to a physics problem. It is actually a strategy that I learned from my high school physics and chemistry teacher that has greatly helped me be really successful in both my chemistry and physics courses. Each letter of guess stands for something to process as you tackle a word problem, whether it's physics, chemistry, or even in your math class. The G stands for given. What are you given in the problem already? What information do you already know? The U stands for unknown. What are you trying to solve for? It's usually like the last sentence in the question. The E stands for equation. Now based off of the givens and also your unknown, which equation have you learned is gonna best serve you in solving for the unknown? The S stands for substitute, and you'll know that you chose the right equation because when you substitute all of your givens into the equation, the only variable left should be your unknown. And finally, the last S stands for solve slash find the solution. This is when you just work out the math, the algebra, or the calculus, depending on your level of physics, to get your final answer. If you'd like to see content-related videos on how to apply the guess technique in solving physics problems based off of different topics, go ahead and check out my physics practice problems playlist. Number two, always practice with your testing calculator from the very beginning of your class. Whatever calculator you're allowed to use during your class test, or if it's a standardized test, or whatever it is, AP Physics, college level, that's the calculator you should be practicing with whenever you're doing practice problems, whether it's during notes in class, your classwork, your homework, additional practice problems, watching YouTube videos, whatever it is, you should definitely be using that calculator as you're practicing. That means that if you're not allowed to use your iPhone during your tests, then please don't use it during practice, no matter how convenient and tempting it is. Trust me, practice makes perfect. You wanna go into your test confident about everything and your calculator technique, the only thing that you're uncertain about, your only unknown, if I'm referring to the you and guess, should just be the problems that are popping up on your test. Y'all, test anxiety is totally a real thing. And we're not sure whether the answer your calculator is giving you is accurate, it's really gonna mess with your mind. And it really doesn't matter which calculator that you purchase, just make sure that it's accepted by your course, accepted by your standardized test, and then the main thing is just to practice with it. Tip number three, make sure that you're staying on top of your units and variables along the way as you learn them. So just to review, variables are symbols, often a letter from the English or the Greek alphabet that represent a specific quantity, while units are how that quantity are measured. Since there are different ways to measure variables, there can be multiple units that correspond to each variable. For example, the variable for velocity is V, but there's multiple units that can measure a velocity. For example, you can measure velocity with meters per second, which is a standard unit, or it could be miles per hour, or it could be kilometers per hour, or it could be kilometers per second, or it could be centimeters per millisecond. Regardless, please know that in physics, there is a standard unit for every variable. And that's often the one you'll want to convert your values into before you plug it into an equation. The equations are often based off of the standard unit for physics. So what I'm saying is even though velocity can be measured in kilometers per hour, miles per hour, miles per second, the standard unit for velocity is meters per second. So oftentimes, and more often than not, you'll want to convert back to meters per second again before plugging in a velocity to an equation. The next thing to know about units and variables is as you cover more and more physics topics, the different letters that show up in the equations can be so overwhelming. In fact, sometimes even the same letter will be used to represent units and variables that mean very different things. 
For example, the n as a variable represents mass, but as a unit, it represents meters for distance. And sometimes the variable that is used to represent a word doesn't even show up in the word. So for example, q represents charge when you get to electrostatics. And don't even get me started on the Greek letters. The best thing that you can do to really familiarize yourself with these units and variables, again, is to practice and to write them out when you're identifying your givens and your problems. Don't just write the number. Make sure that you're writing what unit corresponds to the number, what unit is measuring that number. With enough practice, you'll get that muscle memory and start associating variables and their standard units. Four, don't be afraid to ask questions in class. Make sure you make the most of the resources available to you, especially when you're coming up with questions when you're learning and practicing problems. That's why office hours exist. That's why there's discussion boards. That's why you have your classmates. Make sure you're asking questions along the way so that you can correct any misconceptions. The worst thing that can happen is you're the day before the test and you're really confused about how to solve different problems and how you move forward in your steps. Your teachers are here to help you. So please ask them questions and give them the opportunity to clarify things for you. More often than not, they're more than willing and happy to help. And number five, practice, practice, practice. In fact, not just practice, but perfect practice makes perfect. Not to say that you can't make mistakes, that's what practice is for, but you wanna practice so much until you get to the point where when you're solving a physics problem, you can explain it to yourself. You can explain how you solved it to someone else. That ensures that you truly understand how to solve a specific type of problem. Also, I know it's really tempting in your class to just look at the answer key and to copy that, and that actually could be helpful in the beginning when you're trying to familiarize yourself on how to solve a specific type of problem. But make sure that even when you're copying, don't just go through the motions. Make sure you're asking yourself, why is this the next step? How do I get to that next answer, etc. Those types of questions, that metacognitive skill of asking yourself why and how is really going to ensure that you understand how to solve different problems. Practice is essential, especially in physics. There's really no way around. So just to review, here are my five tips. Number one, use the guess technique, especially when you're starting out and learning a new concept. Use it until you feel like you really understand how to solve the problem, and then you might be able to take some shortcuts. Number two, practice with your testing calculator. Make sure that the only unknown on your test are the problems themselves. You don't want your calculator and how to use it to confuse you and make you doubt yourself. Three, make sure that you're learning units and variables along the way. You can make different quizlets, you can make flashcards, you can make different review activities, you can play games with your friends, whatever it takes to practice those units and variables, make sure that they're very clear to you by the time you get to your assessment and when you look in the equation, you know exactly what those letters represent. Also, you can always practice identifying the units and variables in the G part of the guess technique, which is when you're writing down the givens. Every number should be associated with a unit and a variable as well. Four, ask questions. People want to help. We want you to understand physics. If you ever have a question on one of my videos, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to help you with whatever needs clarifying. And number five, practice, practice, practice. I know it's probably the most cliche thing, but some of these cliches are so true. Practice is so essential to understanding physics and mastering it. So take the time. If something is taking you longer to understand, just keep practicing until you can explain it to someone else or to yourself. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that these tips were motivating and helpful for you. If they were, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more science videos just like this one. Until next time, always remember, this is fine and I can do it.